Yeah! What's up guys? It's sunny in Pittsburgh. Doesn't happen often. Okay, I got a service call up on a roof. Roof, roof, roof. I'll show you where I'm at. Very windy outside. Be careful putting my ladder up. Very careful. Very careful. Okay, so my service call. I have two thermostats that are calling for heat. I have no heat. That unit over there and this unit over here. Currently, draft motor is running. The bearings don't sound too healthy. Um, but that tells me we have power. It's already calling for heat. Most likely, ignition control module. Notorious on these things. Um, they do not have pilot lights anymore. They are not using hot surface igniters on these particular types of units. They're using ignition control modules that sit there and spark just and light up. So let's go ahead and pop open the door, see what we find on this particular unit first. So, draft inducer motor's running. Okay, that's telling me we do have power. It's calling for heat. Okay, but we will check directly here on our terminal strip for low voltage for that thermostat. But, I don't know if you guys can hear it. You hear that little sparking, that ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, ignition control module is trying to spark, but just barely, it's very weak. That's typical with these things going bad. We will check power, okay? On that red wire, 24 volt to ground, that tells us that, hey, we're getting power to this device, and if it's gonna spark or not. But most likely, it's pretty much spent and wore out. So, all right, let me try to get this on camera for you guys. Okay, guys, safety first, wear them safety glasses. Here's our thermostat wire coming from downstairs. We should be reading 24 volts to ground. 23 volts, that's good. This is our, the white wire is for heat. We should be reading zero volts. Okay, 24 volt, boom. We do have closure there, so it's calling for heat. Now, our ignition control module, let's check that to ground. We should be reading 24 volt. 23, 24 volt, okay. It's not sparking. Our ignition control module is bad. I'm gonna order up a new ignition control module and a spark ignition wire. Now, if you can see very carefully, very closely, see that green light, watch it. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, there you go. See, it's uh, fluttering, it's bad. So there's your problem with this one. Now I gotta go take a look at the other one. Okay guys, jumping on the second unit here. Very windy out by the way. It's never windy when it's 95 degrees out, it's always windy when it's cold out. Okay, so power should be on. Okay, blower motor's definitely running. I can feel it running. I can hear it. Okay, so first, let's... Okay, our, we know our draft motor is definitely not running. So we got to check if we're calling for heat at the moment. Make sure there's no alarms or any kind of anything like that. So let me set this down. We'll pop this open here. All right. Yeah, I can hear and see the blower motor is running. Oh. Aha. All right, an indication there's a problem. On a lot of newer equipment, they have LED lights. They will tell you, point you in the right direction. So we must count this. Let's start it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it looked like nine blinks. Usually on the schematic somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, here we go. Nine, ignition control lockout failure limit trip. 
Okay, so that's pointing us in the right direction. So let's go to our heating side and look there. That's that door there. So let me set this down and we'll take another look. A lot of times I do diagnose while there's power on equipment. You can't always do that, by the way. Sometimes safety uh, weighs, outweighs that. Be careful of roofs. You don't want to puncture your customer's roof. Okay, we have, uh, this is a different setup. The ignition control module is a circuit board on this. You got your draft inducer motor. Okay. I'll see. Oh, I do see some faults. So let's look on this. Ugh. First thing, why is our draft motor not working at this time? Give a little touch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's locked. And it's pretty, pretty damn tight. Okay. Uh, you, ooh, you know what? I got my temp gun here. I'll show you this, guys. Ah, zoom on it. That's why I like bringing my temp gun. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, motor's pretty warm. Think our motor's bad? I think we're on the right track here. Most likely that uh, motor's bearings are shot, most likely. And what happened was it it got hot. There's um, how this actually works. Let me explain it to you. Okay, they have power that goes into this. That is 208, 230 volt. Goes in, all right, 120, 120. Now, it'll get this motor spooling up. There's a centrifugal switch right through these two red wires. That goes through, goes down through your uh, rollout switches, safety switches, limit switches, whatnot, and goes to your circuit board. And it says, hey, instead of using a pressure switch, they're using a centrifugal switch, basically. It, it says, hey, the motor's running or not. Currently, not running. That will be open. So, therefore, there's your limit switches. It's just, it's being very vague on the schematic. So, motor bad. Um, I will check power to verify 100% that we are getting our 208, 230 volt going to the motor. But right there, there's your problem. Boom, boom. HVAC is not always impossible, and you don't always have to be um, a brainiac to do it. You just have to uh, look for clues. We have to investigate it um, and fix it. Everything will wear out mechanically. Uh, those are that's non-maintainable motor. You cannot oil or grease it. They just go bad. Just how it is. Okay, guys, I gotta um, write down some stuff here and uh, contact my customer downstairs. So. Wish me good luck. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Hope you're learning.